This is my calibration print. When you set up your device, you need to um, print a calibration print. You need to um, print a calibration print, which is under calibrate. Um, in here, uh, you can load that calibration print. So when you first set up your calibration print, you're just going to click on that load icon and it and uh, it'll load the model and then you go through the process of just hitting continue and then use the material you're going to choose so like PA12 or, or uh, TPE whichever one you're using obviously you have to fill your bed with powder um, that's a totally different video this is just about the calibration in the beginning the application fin that little aluminum extrusion that sort of wipes across is going to go back and forth about 20 times um, it's just sort of preparing your powder um, and uh, that's after a long warm-up process that's probably going to take an hour or so. So if you wait an hour and all of a sudden see your, your applicator just like moving back and forth and back and forth and not lasering anything, check to make sure your laser is turned on, the key is turned on, and then on top of that go and, uh, and uh, just wait a little bit because eventually once it lays down a little layer of powder for the sintered parts to lay into, then it'll begin sintering. Anyway, it just keeps going, just keeps um, putting layer after layer on. Um, it's laying down fractions of a millimeter, so it's going to take a while. The largest build that I'd ever done is 1100 layers, so it takes a very long time to, to kind of put that there. Um, but for this test part, it shouldn't take more than like a half hour to do the sintering and then you still need to do a cool down. Crucial thing, and this is what I learned from 3D Camera, they, um, that you want to make sure that it stays cool, like it, that, that, that it does the proper cool down before you take it out because it will just warp. The plastic in there is just soft plastic and it's, uh, yeah, it'll just, if you pull it out it'll be like taffy and that's not going to work for you because this is all about trying to get an accurate measurement. So I pulled out my test print. This is what Sintertech has for their calibration. You use uh, calipers or some sort of device that can measure down to hundredths of an inch. And here's my little drawing of it. Now I keep this handy just in case I need, ever need to recalibrate. That way I have the numbers. But if you move your printer, like here's my printer here, um, if I move it, then uh, you might accidentally bump the galvos and then you gotta recalibrate the whole thing. So this for, for right now, as long as I keep the device in the same spot, I should be good. Anyway, there are the numbers. So then you go down to, to calculate and they got a whole nother menu here. And you need to calculate how many millimeters it is and then you put down what you actually measured it at. So in the X direction, the little square is supposed to be 40 millimeters across but what I ended up measuring, so on the print, the little notch is up and that's toward the Y. So my Y direction is 39.08 and my X direction is 38.95. 38.95 and that's supposed to be 40 as well. And that one's 39.08. And my Z needed to be five millimeters. The interior dimension of these things is supposed to be 30 millimeters. The outside is 40 millimeters and the thickness of this thing should be five millimeters. I'm gonna add this to be five and my unit printed at 5.05. So that calculates the scaling factors, and as you can see, it adjusted the percentages for you. So I'm going to write these down so I don't, I don't lose these things. Uh, these are stored on your SD card as well, so the SD card in the back is crucial for the machine. Once you get it all done, then you need to send it to the kit. That's it.